Hey, everybody. Welcome to the bonus episode number three. We've called this many different things, but basically what we're trying to do is answer questions that we would never put to our guests, uh, which means that we're also trying to see how many followers we lose as a result. <laughs> so this week is sponsored by a Whiskey Neat. Well, why? We're pretty sure we're going to go through a couple of drinks in this episode. Not only that, we haven't shared these questions with our tech crew, so we are totally flying by the seat of our pants tonight. It's almost as if we're putting the questions to ourselves without knowing what it is that we're going to be asking. Uh, so we have compiled submitted questions that are charged, snarky, or maybe a little flame war-like. So buckle up and get ready to hear us unabashedly tackle these questions for your amusement. With that warning and a drink in hand, here we go. So, uh, oh, oh, Tw your audio just dropped. Oh, shit. Like right at your intro. Oh, my fucking God. Be okay. Well, do we want to try it again? <sighs> I mean, okay. oh, man, I couldn't hear her. That's, that okay. must be on my end. <laughs> We're having an, 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 an true, uh, between two peers flying by the seat of our pants is tradition. Uh, we don't know what the fuck is actually going on. At any <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So people are saying that they can hear me on. Okay, the... cool. It must've been on my end. Sorry, everybody. No worries. All right. So are, did you finish your intro or were you in the middle of your intro? I finished my intro. Helga, you. Shit. Like that's, I missed my cue. Uh, I'm Helga. <laughs> I'm from the West Kingdom. I'm a knight, a pelican, uh, and a general causer of shenanigans. Uh, and so tonight, uh, I'm just going to kind of uh, give you my opinion about what's going on with some of these questions. Well, I guess I didn't introduce myself, so I guess I should do that, too. Uh, yeah. I am Tulia Alori. I am a Laurel from the West Kingdom. I am also a court baroness. Um, I worked really hard on my reputation. And uh, tonight, uh, <laughs> we might see a lot of that uh, social cred go out the window. So we'll, we'll see what we get into. So yeah. Helga, you want to do the first question? Well, I'll do the first question right after going through the drinking game rules. Oh, right. uh, so we right. are drinking tonight. So please remember when a host, because I can't say a guest tonight, when a host uses a non-SCA name when referring to somebody else on the show. Uh, when someone says, before I was a peer in my kingdom, or when I last reigned. When somebody calls for a soapbox, I have a feeling this is going to be used a lot tonight. Uh, and when somebody mentions spite sprinkles. So I will also remind our guests tonight, uh, please feel free to give us your opinions in the comments. We will be trying to post the questions as we uh, ask them. So first question. All the right, first questions funny. are, what are your feelings about a peer quitting the society and leaving students without a mentor? Alternatively, how do you feel about students leaving a peer with bad blood between them? Do, 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 do. I guess I go first, right? Yep, uh, since I am. So, you know, the, if, if, if a peer quits, quits the society and, you know, people are allowed to quit the society, it's not like anyone's holding a gun to your head to stay, regardless of if you're a peer or not. Um, I think that the number one thing you should do is if you're that peer, contact your dependents and say to them, hey, I'm quitting. I can't do this anymore for whatever reason. Um, I need to release you. And that saves a shit ton of bullshit on down the road. I have seen, and I've done this, actually, I have to I confess, I've done this a little bit myself, where I have dropped out a little bit, uh, like, you know, not not completely, but I've dialed my participation way back and then felt as if I'm no longer keeping up to date with my apprentices. And so I've actually reached out to them um, especially, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, finally, when one of them came to me and was like, I feel like you're neglecting us. And <laughs> I realized, oh, shit, okay. I'm uh, having an attack of life. I really need to get my shit together. So the responsible thing to do for me was to say to them, um, you know, I'm gonna, I, I should have told you this earlier, having a lot of life, having a lot of bullshit that I need to work through that isn't conducive to participation in the SCA, um, if you want to maintain, you know, continue to be my apprentice, I'll, I'll accept that. But 
please know that I'll also be okay with the fact that you want to move on to another, you know, another peer or pursue things in your own way while I am trying to figure my shit out. So, uh, but I have seen the opposite, uh, which is basically just like completely cutting out of the SCA and never talking again to the dependent. Um, and, and that causes a lot of drama, uh, a lot of angst on the dependence end um, and a lot of confusion. Um, so my feelings about it is that peers should not do that, that peers are people, peers are human. And having also experienced this a little bit myself, uh, may not even realize that they're going through a thing while they're going through it. And so the ability for them to just be like completely self-aware and say like, oh yes, I am having life. I am going to quit the society and I am not going to talk to any of my dependents. I feel like that's maybe not as common as just the, I am not really self-aware because I'm stuck in the middle of this life crisis and I don't really know what's going on. And every day is a complete struggle. And so I'm just prioritizing the most important things. And the SCA is falling lower and lower and lower on that scale. <laughs> so speak up if you're in that situation and, and, you know, be able to say to the, the peer, like, that's, you know, that's not cool. And I need to hear from you. Um, otherwise I'm bouncing, which you as a dependent have the absolute right to do, um, which kind of feeds into the second part of the question is how do I feel about students leaving a peer with bad blood between them? Um, bad blood happens uh, in, in cases. I have my own um, situation where I had a dependent and we have bad blood between us. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, interpersonal relationships are hard. Sometimes relationships end and they end easily and everybody can be friends at the end of the day. And that's the, you know, hope that everyone has. Uh, other times they are a complete fucking disaster and they there's no hope whatsoever. Scorched earth. Um, the best that you can do is just say, and I don't even think I'm, hit, I'm there yet emotionally, but I work towards this. But to be able to say, yeah, that was a pretty fucked up thing, but you do you, I do me, and we don't have to talk about anything ever. And that's fine. Bygones be bygones. I'm not about holding that shit forever against that person, but I do feel that there is a uh, a lot of working through that I need to get to before that part, before I can get to that part. So Helga, how do you feel? Um... I would say that a peer quitting the society and leaving their students without a mentor, uh, as long as there's an adult conversation uh, where fostering then happens or the students are given options to then move forward. Because uh, some students will choose to stay with that peer just in name, uh, or some, uh, some students will ask to be fostered out. So that's a very adult conversation moment in time. Life happens, you have to step away. Make sure that when you're doing it, you are fostering those relationships to continue growing. That's part of my oath to any of my students is that if I disappear, I will make sure that you have the knowledge to keep going forward or you have the ability to access knowledge to keep going forward. Uh, and so I think if you just disappear on them, you're kind of being an asshole. That's like ghosting somebody in a relationship. Uh, just don't do it. Like have the adult conversation, have that scary conversation and move forward. Uh, alternatively, how do I feel about students leaving a peer with bad blood between them? Uh, some differences are going to stay bad blood, mm -hmm. um, and that's how it is. Um, I, again, I recommend have the adult conversations, take the time to have the adult conversations, um, tell your peer, look, this isn't working. Like I thought this relationship would work and this relationship does not work. And here's the X, Y reasons. Um, and either give that peer time to adjust what is going on and how they are dealing with the situation or sever the relationship. And sometimes when you sever a relationship, it's bad blood's going to happen. Hurt feelings are going to happen. Uh, and so just do it in the most adult manner and the most clear communicated manner possible, um, because that's going to reflect on you later. And the more adult that you handle it, the better off you'll be down the road. And I also want to kind of put the alternative uh, on this too, which is as a peer, if you have a student that you have bad blood with. Um, it's not, you know, we, we always kind of come at the peers as though they are uh, infallible and they're not the ones with the bad blood, blah, blah, blah. It's always on the student. 
or the dependent to to suss out if it's a toxic relationship and then make the decision to leave. It's it goes the other way too. Um, and we've talked a lot about this on the show where, you know, it's it's like being in a romantic relationship in a lot of ways. Um, it's it's a two way street. So sometimes the toxic behavior can be the dependent and they uh, you know, that's that's where the peer needs to be emotionally prepared to walk away or to have that difficult conversation and try to fix it. Um, and, and it's hard because, you know, peers are human and we you know, we also struggle with, I got to have a difficult conversation with my apprentice and I don't want to do it because it's going to hurt their feelings or it's going to be taken out of context or this person is completely volatile and I don't know how they're going to react to me saying, hey, knock that shit off. Um, but, you know, communication, it's a, you, you use I statements, <laughs> don't use you statements. Try to approach it like you would a, uh, you know, a, a loved one that you're trying to resolve an issue with. And if that issue is unresolvable, and I'm saying this to both peers and students or peers and dependents, you know, walk away, walk away. It's not going to benefit you if you're in a miserable situation. So. Agreed. Uh, all right. You ready to tackle the next one? I can. And this one deals with you, my dear. <laughs> Why are all peerages equal, but knights are better? Uh, so I actually think one, uh, we allowed anybody that, uh, basically we're on the discord server. And so one of the things is if you boost the discord server, you get like, you get to help us sometimes choose questions. Uh, this question had like eight asterisks next to it. And so I was like, oh yeah, we're wrestling this. So like eight, eight different people were like, we want to answer this one answered. <laughs> uh, and so my answer to this question that's been sent in is that all peerages are equal Knights are the most visible. We're not better. <laughs> that's that's for sure. Um, like, oh, yeah. Um, this one I hits think, hits Helga right in her toe beans. <laughs> yeah, this one touches all my toe beans. Uh, being oh. being a Pell and being a knight is actually two different animals. Um, being a royal peer is a different animal beyond that. Um, but our our knights and our and actually amusingly enough, our royal peers because you wear a coronet afterwards are really the most visible of the peerages um and because of that we tend to get leaned on a little bit more or have more visibility so there's a little bit more of that like uh celebrity status in quotes um about what you are in the society uh and i think that where this question comes from is the fact that there's people that that goes to their head mm because they're more easily recognized they're like oh yeah well you know at least they know who i am and i'm like i'm gonna slap the fucking shit out of you god damn it um and so where i look at being more visible as being more responsible like you have there's like the extra level of like well you must always be a peer and you must like really try not to have bad days um my my thing is knights aren't better, but we are more visible, which leads to more like street cred, hmm. um, and that is more easily abused or more easily reinforced. So it's not really an answer, but it's kind of an answer. So yeah, I think that it, a lot of this comes from the fact there's just if you want to take the the broadest view possible of the SCA, and uh, it it is rooted in the fact that we are uh, fundamentally what we were created to do was create recreate a chivalric society so we're recreating the medieval ideal of chivalry and it's not even the medieval ideal it's really the victorian ideal of the medieval <laughs> chivalry <laughs> so uh it is it is sanitized it's idealized it's not rooted in any sort of realistic experience of what you know a, a true medieval knight would have behaved as versus what we expect from the knighthood or the chivalry uh in the in the SCA it is it's this weird it's like you you take taffy like a ball of taffy and you just pull it apart it's this weird stretchy thing that is just has elements of the original but is not actually at all what it was in history and the other part of that is that the premier peerage in the SCA is the knighthood. At the first event that was ever held, 
the the May Day, uh, you know, May 1st, 1966 in a backyard in Berkeley, a man was knighted. A man was knighted. And that was the first peerage ever made in the SCA. So it is sort of the premier peerage of the SCA. There is this uh, um, hierarchy that becomes part of it. All of the other period peerages come after it. And if we all were to line up, you know, in kind of a, an order of precedence, just based on when the peerages were created, knighthood would be first, right? That's, I think that that's indisputable. However, we have retconned a lot of this, uh, you know, behavior um, or a lot of this history into this idea that all the peerages are the same, but because the knighthood was the first, they're the they're the premier, and it it. It is, they're very visible. Uh, they wear a white belt or a white baldric if they're a master at arms. Um, it's visible in the dark. <laughs> you know? It's visible from 20 yards away in the middle of the night. Um, you can see they, they've got chains, they've got belts. They're, they're usually, typically, large men. Uh, the presence of the chivalry is is just very present um, and easy to spot. So I think that it's 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 hard in a way to say that they are better than the rest of the peerages because I don't feel that I'm a laurel. I think I'm fucking kick ass, right? But I also have to admit that they were the first peerage. They're very visible. They have male privilege. <laughs> and uh and all of those things feed into this sense of primacy um and and they by and large are the pool of individuals that win crowns so you know that's that is where that comes from that is where this this perception comes from is it accurate in reality yes and no uh yes in that we kind of all agree that their number you know they were the the prime peerage they were the uh, original peerage and they should be you know based on that accorded some sort of you know respect um or not you know you don't have to have respect for anybody it's not no one again no one's holding a gun to your head to respect peers for the fact that they're peers but the fact that they were the first peerage that i think human beings are inclined to be like well okay you were the first so there you go. You're also the 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 people that more often than not win crowns, um, like vastly <laughs> more often than not are are kings. And every 150 crowns that go by, maybe a woman, <laughs> but knights. So yeah, I get where that perception comes from, and it's hard. But uh, in reality, to me, do I believe that knights are any more uh, or more equal than I am? No, I don't. I have seen the knights get shit on far more than any other peerage. And for being the most visible, that's what you get. You also get to be the biggest target. So it's, it is a, you gotta weigh it. You gotta weigh it. Next question. Any follow-ups? <laughs> Uh, the, I'm just going to reinforce that uh, I agree with the the male privilege. Um, um, I agree with, uh, and I agree with. It's the power structure. Uh, I touched on it a little bit. In my answer is, it typically there is a knight involved in reigns, uh, and so thus, the knights are also very visible within the power structure and who holds what you know the perceived power in the mm -hmm. SCA, uh, and so, it doesn't make us as knights more equal than other people because that drives me absolutely insane i think that should make us humbler um and that should make us more more understanding of what uh both franchise and uh fealty means because those two things affect us a lot so yeah next question <laughs> baby ninja has feels so yeah. <laughs> well do we want to let baby ninja chime in Baby Ninja, go ahead and chime in. Turn okay. on your mic. It's on now. Uh, okay. I'm going to avoid the male privilege discussion, but I think 
it goes to their head because if you look at every SCA recruitment demo, I'm using recruitment with air air quotes for everybody that can't see me. Uh, you see and hear fighters, and that as certain people with certain mentalities get to a peerage, it goes to their head because they are always seen and hear heard. Standing across a demo field, I can hear the fighters. I can't hear the artists. I can't hear the service folk as much as you should because they're a much bigger part than we as fighters are. You see and hear the loud clashes, the screaming, the hurrahs, and then they go over to the booth, and then there's the people like Tulia doing her costuming stuff. You know, we have a couple music people here, and a lot of people find it awesome, but then there's the fighting again, and everybody turns to the sound and the chaos. And like when I throw a grown man, that gets much more reaction than Tulia, like, look at this fantastic dress it took me 60 hours to make, which I think is crap because. It take, took me two months to learn how to throw a grown man. Woohoo. It took no real skill besides a, a right step and a, a body check, whatever. She had to learn how to do all the stuff correctly. So I think that's part of it. It's because you can be seen in here and heard from across the field or across the building or whatever. I feel like uh, it does still take a shit ton of skill to learn how to fight well, though. And, and Fight well, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to fight well for a demo. And like, that's a lot of times where, where I get approached for recruitment wise. And it goes to people's head because I can swing at a shield all day. Woohoo. That takes zero skill. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that, uh, I used to shit on the nights a lot. Um, I used to look at it like, you, you know, yeah, well, they think they're better than us or everybody treats them like they're better than us or whatever. Um, and then I got to know more and more nights as I was going longer and longer in the society. And I realized, again, it, it's that kind of death of, uh, of bigotry, the death of uh, discrimination is actually getting to know the people that you hate, right, that you just irrationally, you know, decide to hate you start to get to know them and you realize they're just people. And that also not just people, but they're like super cool people and they have all the cool things about them. Like any other person has any cool thing about them. And you start to learn, uh, you know, that, that this knight here, yeah, he's a knight and he's a really badass fighter, but he's also a really good artist. This guy makes amazing stained glass windows. Or this guy over here uh, is is a really great dancer. Like, he's a knight, but he is an amazing dancer. And he's super, super dialed into the, the dance community and is fostering that as hard as he's fostering the martial arts side of things. And this this girl over here who is a knight, who's like just a swaggery, like blah, 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 may or may not be talking about Helga for real, <laughs> is a super smart sensitive and you know interesting person to talk to has a lot of like worldly understanding that that i lack and that it so you you suddenly start to dismantle this idea that oh they're all just a bunch of dumb stick jocks you know like they really kind of there's yes there's some of those just dumb stick jocks that are knights sure but also there's just this broad variety of human being that do all sorts of cool stuff and you know, that in itself, uh, I think, is something that, that often gets overlooked. And, you know, in the the knights are the most visible and therefore they get shit on the most kind of mentality. All right. Well, are we ready for the next question? Sure. Uh, this might actually be my favorite question, by the way. Um, is this one? It's mine. No, this one's yours. Right. <laughs> uh, so, by the way, everybody, uh, just knowing this is all of these are anonymous tonight. We will not be naming anybody that sent in questions. Yeah. Episode. Uh, so just go from there. Yeah. Uh, the qu the question slash statement. I have to put this one out there. A year or so ago, a former friend stated that you could only become a peer if you slept with the, uh, slept with a member of the Order of Chivalry. Mm. What does this say about her that she states that this is why she slept with a knight who told her that? Uh. Okay. So what does it say about her? Um. I am uh not gonna. I don't I know. Say, what... Let's not judge the second half of that question and go after the first part of. Do you have to sleep with a member of the Order of the Chivalry to become a peer? 
I mean, I used to joke, honestly, in all reality, I used to sit there and joke about like, you know, who do I have to blow to be a Laurel, you know, to get a Laurel? Uh, I will say, uh, in my experience, blowing other Laurels does not get you a Laurel any quicker. At least, at least in my, my experience. <laughs> um, I've heard other people, you know, throw that in about like, you know, got to sleep with the king to get a peerage or whatever. I think that there are situations where that has happened. I, you know, the society has been around for 56 years, right? Sure. I'm, I'm positive. I can say a hundred percent. There are situations where someone got a peerage because they slept with the right person. Um, I don't know who those people are. You know, I can't name names, but Come on, all things being equal, it is highly likely. And it's a trope. It's a it's a thing in the SCA that everybody is just like, oh yeah, she slept with the king to get the laurel. <laughs> you know, whether or not that's true, which is a whole other fucking can of worms. But but uh I will say that no, I don't think that sleeping with another knight is gonna get you any other peerage um and if you're in this like line of inquiry and you're thinking about who you could sleep with to get a peerage i would say go for broke and sleep with like oh the crown like <laughs> don't don't sit there and like lowball it with like any other of the peerages because they're not the people that actually make the peers yeah <laughs> that's just practical advice um, but I, you know, I will also say it can backfire on you spectacularly and, uh, it's not a given, it's not a given and it shouldn't be a given because that is not a thing that, uh, really it's not a behavior that should be rewarded. So, uh, so my response to this is going to bring up the, this is going to probably end up turning into a soapbox. Uh, so it was told to me by the member of an order, uh, a member of the order of the chivalry at one point that I was fucking my way to a belt. No, oh, that's fun. Uh, yeah, super fun. And then it was How said in you... council. Oh, no, fun. Uh, so what I'm going to tell you is that this rumor needs to fucking die. Uh, so I'm just going to go with you should be able to sleep with who you want to sleep with uh, and go from there. Um, I mean, at least as long as it's consensual with everybody. As long as it's consensual. Yes, always consent given. Sorry, like, let me just put out there. You should sleep with whoever you want to sleep with as long as consent is given. Um, but also understanding uh, that the power dynamic in that relationship. Uh, and so I have very typically ended up with partners that were knights um and so this was a rumor for a while and it drove me insane and it actually made it so i only like dated squires for a little while um and like made any lover that was a knight swear up and down they would never speak positively about me in council like that was a thing like you will give me your oath right now if we go to bed together you can never speak in a positive manner or, uh, in council about me um which definitely started some interesting conversations. Uh, and so what I would say is just understand the power dynamic in, in the situation that you're getting into. Um, also, uh, totally, I'm going to have to like push back a little bit. Sleeping with the king, totally not a way to like manipulate the council. You just need to sleep with enough of the council <laughs> to then get a positive vote. I mean, if you're going to go for broke, you need to go for like... Just sleep Con with all of like, them. <laughs> you need to go with Roman concubine status when it comes to like that council. And, oh, so like, that sure was my that was my failing. I didn't sleep yeah. with enough laurels. Yeah, you gotta sleep. You gotta sleep. I only with, slept like, with one. <laughs> you gotta sleep with the power players. Oh, then God. that's how you manipulate it. You just put the cherry on top by sleeping with the royalty. Don't just sleep with the king. The royalty. You want both votes there. Um, oh, so sure. I mean, royalty gets. Final call. Royalty gets final say. Yeah, so royalty gets final say. So you gotta make sure you gotta, like seal the deal there. But if you're gonna do this, you gotta concubine it, and that's a fucking laurel right there, because then you're following very Roman traditions. Uh, I'll tell you, fucking your way to a belt, bad idea. That, that like, just, you know. Yeah. yeah like, um. So, but overall, this it, off the snark on this one for a moment is really this. This rumor is just a very toxic rumor to use, and it's a very manipulative rumor to use. Yeah. Uh, and I cannot wait until it dies. Can I actually insert one thing, though? Because the, the original question said, what does it say about her, the friend? 
that she says that she slept with the knight who told her that. I'm like, you know what it really says is about the knight that said that. That is what I have opinions on, is that any peer that would manipulate a non-peer into sleeping with them by saying, if you do this, you could get a peerage, that's fucked up. That is fucked up. That is wrong. That is not, that is manipulative. That is coercive. That is a whole bunch of fuck no. So fuck that night. Yeah, seriously. Like yeah. that dude can go piss up a rope. Any peer that does that, like Jesus Christ, like mm-hmm. stop using your titles to get laid. Oh Fuck my God, sake. right? Use your personality. Yeah, develop a personality. Maybe you'll get laid more. I I'm sorry know. if your period is your, the only part of your personality. You're peering wrong. Exactly. Uh, so shall we move to the next question? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, number four. <laughs> okay. Uh, Why do we still insist on selecting crowns based on something totally related to whatever qualities we want them to have, be it diplomacy or tact or looking pretty on a throne or whatever? Should we switch to popular vote for our crowns? So these were two questions that were similar that we just tacked together. Okay. uh, (laughs) This is where we lose followers. You end up with all the really spicy ones you have to answer. (laughs) Yeah, like, uh, so this is where we're going to lose. I am not pro moving away from fighting. I understand that this this system benefits me. I 100% that this system be- understand that this system benefits me. I am speaking from a place of privilege right now. Um, also, I'm speaking from a place of having been a seneschal during a popular vote and running baronial votes and watching it tear people apart. Um, so fighting right now is one of the only ways that we run off of renown and honor to do the thing. Everything else turns into opinion. And when opinions happen, war happens. Mm -hmm. Um, And mind you, we can have people that rhino their way through crown. We can have other things. Also, this question completely ignores the fact that half of the reigning couple is something else. Um... And I think that many times when this comes up, we don't look at the idea that our queens actually bear the brunt or our princesses bear the brunt of a reign mm-hmm. uh, and bear the brunt of the idea of what it is meant to be as inspirational. Stick jocks are treated as stick jocks. Uh, kings have to be inspirational, inspirational a couple times. Queens are expected to be inspirational and gracious the entire time. Uh, and so that's one of the things that I run into with this question is we don't have a way to not turn it into a popularity contest. Um, We don't have a way to deal with it in a manner that isn't going to tear people apart and turn it into a political gambit. Mm -hmm. Um, Can we make heavy fighting and selecting crowns better? Yep, we totally can. Um, The knights need to get bolder about calling rhinos out. The kings need to, the kings and the queens need to get bolder about walking out to the field and being like, I'm sorry, you're fucking removed. Like, we're done with you. Like, you, you've got a problem, and we're not supporting you on this field anymore. You have surrendered your honor here. Um, but we need to also understand that a little bit of the SCA is bred in circuses. Um, our royals are expected to do a lot. We cannot ignore that fact. But we also can't ignore the fact that our officers are the main power source. Our royalties are inspiration. Our officers are the power source. Um, and so there's a lot of things that go with it and can we make it better? Can we make it more inclusive? Yes. I don't know how to do that without again, turning it into a voting body. And I flat out fear what that will do to the SCA. Uh, so I am probably not surprising to anyone who knows me agree with Helga. Um, in the sense that I have been a part of uh, other reenactment groups where a uh, voting was a system of either audition, it was audition or it was voting, was a system of deciding who was going to be the leader or the you know, perceived leader uh, in the group. And every single time it was monumentally more drama than we see in the SCA when it's just a, a you know, two, guy, uh, two people meeting each other on the field to determine who is the better fighter. 
And I kind of really bristle when people say we should turn it into a voting situation because name one baronial uh one baronial election that has never erupted into drama on some level. I have never seen one. I have never heard about one where it has just been completely like everybody's feelers is okay at the end of the day. People's feelings get involved in this. And when feelings get involved in it, political shit happens. And then po politics makes other people feel bad. And it is a snowball effect that I do not want to see happen with the highest, you know, and I shouldn't say highest office because it's not even the highest office. The king and the queen are not the highest office in the kingdom. That's a seneschal. And that is actually something that you can be appointed to. It's not an, it is not like a, 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 a situation where you have to be like the best at something. You take your qualifications, you put it in a, a CV, you submit it to the crown, and half the time, even in kingdom level seneschal, uh, seneschal el elections, what I don't know, what do you call those? Polls? I don't know. Uh, there's only one person that's willing to take up the mantle, and that is the most powerful person in the kingdom, is the seneschal, and that is not a fighter-determined thing. You think that the king and queen would sit there with their pretty crowns on their head and the pretty thrones and get to be pretty pretty and like be the center of attention that they're the people that actually call the shots? Fuck no, it's the seneschalate. It is the seneschalate. That's where the real power lays. And I think the people do not get that. They do not understand that until they have sat close enough to it and seen where the decision making actually happens. And it happens in the back end, the back room with the person you probably couldn't pick out of a lineup who is your kingdom seneschal and so uh in a in a long way around just saying that i am still in favor of keeping fighting as the determination for crowns if you as a non-fighter want to have an effect and like have real power in the kingdom run for your local seneschalate for your principality seneschalate for your kingdom seneschalate and then maybe even the society seneschal it, and then you'll have ultimate power. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, but that's where the real power is in that. It's also a lot of the awful paperwork, awful, you know, day to day drudgery, minutia, bureaucracy. Uh, and the king and the queen, they just get to sit there and they get to largely be uh, figureheads and they get to be pretty figureheads, and that's fine and that's cool. But yeah, if you're really if you're really into like trying to dial in where the power is, it's in the seneschal. It, it's not in the crown. So the crown gets to make a lot of decisions. Uh, it may look incredibly unfair that the crown gets to make decisions based on who gets to be best in a in a heavy fight, um, which is very selective as to who can actually get into that fight to begin with, and then who can advance to a final round. But the real power is the seneschal. Also very much against the, uh, yeah, the, uh, sorry, I just closed my tab that had the questions in. But yeah, very much against the idea that there, that we should do away with fighting because honestly, it's the least amount of drama. Um, and again, I go back to my experiences in Ren Faire and, uh, and with how they decided who got to be queen, it was who fit the dress. I fit the dress, I got to be queen. There was no qualifications at all whatsoever about me actually being able to perform the role or anything, I, you know, I would do okay, but I fit the dress. So that was what allowed me to be Queen Victoria at Dickens Fair. Uh, you, you know, you don't want to go that route. It was a lot of, a lot of drama. Trust me. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, uh, so I heard some splashing in the background. Oh, do we get a, we get a Lady of the Lake? I didn't know she was going to show up. <laughs> she she asks is it too soon to bring up tacos again mm -mm. It's never too soon to bring up tacos i love tacos. oh my god there is multiple sticky notes here <laughs> oh hard question why do you think uh clicks and bad behavior happen in any group of more than 10 people is there a way to make it better no, I think that's human nature. I don't. I mean, to make it better, yeah, you've 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 got to be a good, intrinsically good person. 
I don't think I'm an intrinsically good person. Um, I succumb to the pressures of, you know, group dynamics far more than I would like to admit that I do. Um, but uh, clicks, I think, are a human. It's a human thing. It, it is. It's we're tribal. We want to all feel like we belong um, to a certain, you know, group. And and I don't necessarily know. It's probably not a bad thing. It's a survival thing that's deeply ingrained in our little lizard brains. Um, the trouble, of course, is that it it does make for a very uh, unpleasant experience um, for many people, including the people in that clique that are trying to be mean girls about, you know, some other person. And uh, what helps is just constantly remembering that you're here to do, you're here to be good and do good and not shit on people. Um, do I always manage to do that? No. <laughs> no. Uh, but I do have a thing nowadays where I try to remember to give a compliment to some random person, not somebody who's like part of my clique, part of my group, not like, you know, telling Helga, you know, how great her eye makeup looks today. <laughs> you know? Uh, your eye makeup looks really good, but hey girl. you know, not, not like going to one of my close friends and being like, I love you. Although that is important. That is important. But, uh, to go to somebody that's outside my group, of, you know, my little click, my little friend group and saying something nice about something that they're doing. Like, you know, I'm really, I'm watching you come up on Facebook with like your sewing project and I think it's coming along really well. And I'm really excited to see how it happens. You know, what, what comes out of it. Or I think that, you know, you posted a selfie the other day and you were really pretty. And I just wanted you to know that just making sure that once a day, I reach out to somebody outside my group and, and say something nice. Um, has helped me at least be a little more mindful of the tendency to clickify and to, you know, circle the wagons and close off. Elga? Uh, so I'm going to say that why do you think clicks and bad behavior often happen in a group of more than 10 people? It's because we start, uh, when you get a bigger group, you start facing your insecurities. Uh, mm -hmm. So the bigger the group, the more your insecurities are there. So when you have a small group of people, uh, you can generally gauge how they see you and interact with you. So the smaller the group, the tighter the information. Uh, the bigger the group, the more we ourselves as humans become insecure. And so we look for safety. So thus we create a pack or a click. Um, and that click or pack turns into an echo chamber that then reinforces protecting those insecurities. That's the reason why typically people that hang out together have very like minds, mm -hmm. um, is because they're all actually reinforcing the same insecurity and then acting it out on the world because how we see other people is really a mirror. Um, we're just looking at our own insecurity or something that we don't like on ourselves. And if we actually use that as a tool and understand that when we hang out with people, the more diver diverse group, the less clickish. So you invite differing personalities, you invite the conversation, you invite the other ideas into your group to challenge yourself, to challenge your insecurities, and to increase your level of communication. That's how we beat the clicks, is we beat the clicks by being open, honest, and raw with each other, while also making space for other people to do the same thing. Because we get more polarized the more we guard our own behaviors. And so just remember that. Yeah. So, so now are, we ready? are we ready for the next question there? Yeah. Is this one mine? or? Oh, uh, by the way, everybody totally called us on a soapbox on uh, the last question. So yeah. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the next question. Uh, can I actually call a break? Uh, yes. I don't know if we scheduled a commercial break or anything, and I don't even know if we're running commercials today. But uh, yeah, we are. We are running commercials. So if you need a break, then uh... <laughs> yeah, there you go. commercial break. Commercial break. Owl's Nest Wares creates one-of-a-kind ink-woven trim and belts. 
Choose from a selection of pre-made items or contact the artist to create something to perfectly match your needs. They also make necklaces from colorful wooden beads to add a pop of color to your wardrobe. Check them out today and let them know that Between Two Pairs sent you. You can find them on Facebook at Owl's Nest Wares. That's Owl's Nest Wares on Facebook. Over 290 times, heroes have met upon the Crapeau field under the watchful eye of Constable Sir Bertrand de Gecklin. An unbroken line come rain, shine, or pestilence. To determine the rightful tricentennial Crapeau, the Fellowship of the Argent Angel shall host a tournament in March of the year 2021. Three days of fighting and feasting of shared words and experiences, of courage and chivalry, shall end with one most worthy, the 300th Crapeau. Do you have what it takes? For more information, go to bit.ly forward slash 300 Crapeau to find the Facebook event page. In a society based on living a dream, we deliver items and goodies that help you on your way. We specialize in some of the more artistic interpretations based on early period crafts, but we still throw in the mystical and unique arts. Much of what we sell is created by us. We sell cool things, and if you can't find it, we'll do our best to get it. Besides having some of the coolest stuff around, Wolf Flood is a freelance artist who operates a graphic shop that prints t-shirts and embroidery. We may not have what you need, but we have what you want. We specialize in the unique. Hey, awesome. commercial Welcome break. Welcome back, Yay. everybody. <laughs> Hope you've all um, had time to pee, because I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is it your turn for a question or my turn for I think it's my um, turn for a question. I think it's, it's your mine. turn for a question. I think yep. it's yours. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the next question up is the current methodology for rec uh, is the current rec methodology for recognition broken? Can it be fixed? How would you change the award structure of the SCA if you could? Okay, uh, I, you know, I go back to humans are fallible and fuck up a lot. So even if we have rules in place, they're going to get messed up, abused, not followed, you know, or followed poorly. And so uh, I think I know where this question is leading. And I think it's the, you know, the people getting recognized aren't the people that should get recognized. And that's a, that's a problem. Um, first of all, uh, you know, most royalty that aren't dialed into the sycophant bullshit, uh, just know what people tell them about what people are doing. So it's not like they're omnipotent and um, automatically know that, you know, Lord Joe is working his butt off in the kitchen every feast and is putting out amazing uh you know food stuff wow okay yeah <laughs> is making amazing food for these feasts and is slaving away and thank you carius is like giving me an applause for being so eloquent um but <laughs> you know who who is who is going above and beyond and making amazing food and like serving people on like a budget of twenty dollars he's able to like serve 20 200 people you know and doing all this amazing amazing stuff if they're not being told so so a lot of times people also fall into this belief that only people getting recognized are the friends of the crown and that when you when you really strip it away 
is actually something that number one, most crowns that I've known don't want to actually happen. Um, and the other part of it is that maybe it's because they're a little more aware of what the people around them are doing. So they get seen, but they want to know what the people they can't see or that aren't like in their closer circles um, are doing. And, and the best way of breaking that down is sending an award recommendation. And most kingdoms, I know the West Kingdom for sure, has an online system. Uh, you fill it out. It's a form. It goes straight to crown at westkingdom.org. And it tells the people that are sitting on the thrones what this awesome person is doing um, that deserves a recognition of some form. And you don't even need to recommend them for an award. You can just say, like, you know, Lord Joe is kicking ass and taking names at doing feasts. And I think he deserves some kind of recognition. And, you know, you guys should really look into that. And they can pull up the OP. They can see, uh, you know, what awards Lord Joe has gotten and make their decision based on that. But most crowns I know desperately want to give uh, awards to anyone and everyone, not just their best friends, you know. Um, is the award structure award the way everything is work you know works out is it broken i i don't think so i actually don't think so um should could there be improvements yes uh but i don't think that that fundamentally it's a broken system um it is it is a system though that requires on uh other people being aware of what other people are doing and making sure that that information gets to the people that can give the awards helga Okay, uh, so I'm actually going to answer this. I'm going to answer the first part, and then I'm going to answer the second part. So current methodology of uh, award recognition, is it broken? I don't think so. For how we built it, I think that it functions. Uh, and when I rained... I haven't even swallowed. One of the things that we looked for is actually, like, we very actively looked for where are these people? Like I had a map out. We made sure that we knew where they were coming from and like listen to all the award recommendations. Uh, and especially like, I didn't have to know the person to give the award. Um, I spoke about the words that were sent in to them, uh, and for them about whatever they were doing. Uh, and so realistically, I think one of the things that we do is that how, how we give awards isn't publicly spoken about enough which i think is what makes the award system feel broken um how would i change there's there's tons of changes that i would do holy shit is there tons of changes that i would do uh so the sca is a volunteer organization and i love the sca uh however occasionally i really wish that we would spend money on technology and o databasing mm -hmm. um so in the west drink we get award recommendations in via email. It doesn't actually say what award they're really recommending the person for unless it is in the notes section. It's just like for ANS, for service, for this. So you then have to then you then have to go look up the person in the OP, make sure that they don't already have the award, everything else like that. And so one of the things that's going on is we have no like cross checking live action database system. And so the person submitting the award rec 80% of the time hasn't checked to see if the person already has the award. And so one of the things that's ending up happening is people feel like, well, I sent this person in for an award like a ton of times. Well, they already have legitimately everything that they can get. And so we started running, like, people that had everything legitimately that you could give them. We were like, we're literally going to call up and just do a public thank you. Thank yes. you for your continued service. Thank you yes. for doing this. We have award recs coming in for you. And you have everything. Yeah. Um, and so I would like it easier for the populace to look up and understand what award somebody has before they recommend them to the crown. And I think if we can make that a very simple system, which I don't know how to do, I'm just going to say that I am talking out my ass here, um, is that if we can come up with that, that I think would make both the royalties' lives easier and it would make the populace understand what's going on way more. I mean, uh, the, the, the online system, I think, is, is over a decade old right now in the West. And... 
Uh, and it was it was a huge turning point when it was created. It was literally like, oh, my God, because before you would have to email the crown directly. You would just have to pop in crown at, you know, westkingdom.org. And in fact, at the time, it wasn't even westkingdom.org. You had to go into like SCA dash West Kingdom dash whatever dot com. And that would go to the crown. Mm-hmm. And and finally, you know, everything started getting consolidated and then they created this online form system that was wonderful because it streamlined it. There's issues though, in the sense that like Helga said, they don't, uh, they don't have specific awards that you can recommend a person for unless you go, you, the individual recommending the award takes the trouble to go through the OP and look for an award that the individual. It's actually, it's relatively hard to go through that OP. It is really hard. And that's the other part of it too, is that that OP is not very user-friendly and and at least in the West Kingdom, that this is something that, you know, it's there, the information is there, but it's hard to find. Yes. I just actually want to be clear in this too. We are not bashing the volunteers no. that do this job. Like I want no, to be. No, 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 not at I all. To, I need to like, this is where I'm going to sit down a soapbox of the, the SDA and the kingdoms don't spend money to make this user friendly. We rely on the people that do this for a living or outside of this. And so I love our volunteers for what they do. This is just us talking about possible improvements. And if I could throw dollars at it, I would. So what I was trying to say, though, is that this was a massive improvement on the former system. But now this system is is 10 years old. Uh, it's it's now we have seen that it's got these these cracks, basically, in it where information falls through. And one of the major ones is uh, the information doesn't get retained between reigns. So if you make a, res- a recommendation late in a reign, um, say, like, they're about to step down at 12th night, uh, but you make a recommendation for somebody that did a, a really great job at boar hunt, which was like, you know, there's maybe like three weeks between boar hunt and and 12th night. Um, if if that crown is not able to give that award, that information doesn't get passed on to the crown that steps up after them. So it just kind of falls into this hole. Uh, and one of the things that could be super helpful and one of the ways that could be, you know, uh, the, 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 this loot or this gap can be filled in is to make sure that that information, uh, you know, there could be a checkbox like this person was recommended for an award. Che- that person was given the award. Check that off. If that doesn't get checked off, then it goes to the next crown. They can make that determination based on the information that was submitted. Um, but yeah, I'm not at all trying to shit on IT because our Kingdom IT team is has a herculean amount of information to work with and requirements to work with and they do incredible things um and and it it is a lot of times since we are a volunteer organization it is one of those things where we're all just kind of trying to and i do this myself in in the office that i that i have uh, is that we're all just basically trying to uh, make do with what we've got and do it uh, to the best that we can because l- everything's changing light speed and we have life on top of it. We have day jobs on top of it. We have, you know, kids that have to go to school and we have, you know, bills to pay and we've got all this other like life crap and then COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of this stuff in the SCA and our hobby falls lower and lower and lower on the hierarchy of things that need to get addressed. But these are suggestions as to ways that, you know, these these things could be uh, improved so that these these oversights in awards uh, can be lessened Um, because it is it's one of those things. The most frustrating thing is me as a, you know, just a populist member um, who's never reigned. And I am one of these people that is sending in award recommendations and I'm not getting a response back. That's the other part, too, is like you really don't get a confirmation back when you submit the online recommendation. And so you don't know where it goes unless the crown specifically decides to respond to you and say, thank you for your recommendation. We will take it under advisement or whatever. Um, Also, we will take it under advisement is kind of code for we're going to stick that in the round file. Fuck you. (laughs) Just Uh, (laughs) so. But I've gotten that from a number of royalty. Um, But. If that's the situation, if you get the we will take it under advisement or no response at all, you it's up up to you to resubmit for the next crown consideration. And and it is something that comes down to you've got to just be really tenacious and on top of it. And it's hard. It's hard for, you know, me to sit there and be like, uh, you know, 50 different things I need to do during the day. Oh, fuck. I also need to 
submit, resubmit or re, re, resubmit this award recommendation for this person I think really deserves this award. <gasps> but yeah. So part number, are you ready for part number two of that question? Oh, we haven't even gotten to part number two. Yeah, go for it. Uh, how would I change the award structure within the SCA? Uh, this is where we're going to lose followers and I'm a terrible human being. Um, I would hard reset uh, the peerages to everybody is a knight. And then you are a knight of mm-hmm. uh, no, I whatever thing. Agree. I 100% agree with that. Uh, and so you are you are a knight of, you know, you are a knight, knight of, of the world. You are a knight, knight of, of the, the chivalry. Pelican. Yeah, knight of the pelican. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the reason why I would do this is I would actually, th- I think that this would simplify uh, a bunch of the peerage meetings mm-hmm. uh, of I call all my knights uh, to do this, or I call these specific knights to then weigh in on this. Uh, and so it's main category, subcategories. Uh, also, one of the things that actually drives me nuts is that the only peerage that is in fealty constantly to the crown is the knights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I believe that peer- and like fealty, or fealty is actually a huge thing for me. Uh, and while I understand the master, uh, the masters, and I understand the religious reasons why the masters exist, um, I also think that, you know, maybe those masters then turn into their own subcategory of other things. Uh, that way we can mm-hmm. juggle that religious significance and the reason why that exists. Um, however, I think that as a peerage, one of the things that should happen is, you know, if we're going to make everybody equal amongst peers, uh, that's the first way to do it. Um, it also gets rid of all the, all the knights are then visible. Um, and what do I think that the, you know, all knights should have chains. Okay. So if you're a knight of whatever you have a chain and then Rattan gets the white belt, you know, Equestrian gets the spurs. Laurels get the laurel leaves along with the chain. Like that's that's how you go from there. Um, beyond that, I actually really kind of like how the rest of our award structure works. Maybe I would do the same thing within our award structure. Um, so in the West Kingdom, I just took another drink. Damn you! Why do you do this to me? <laughs> my idea is to get you drunk tonight. Uh, <laughs> is that we have the leaves of achievement, which is a very similar idea. Is all the leaves then fall into the category. So they're different leaves for the categories, mm-hmm. but they involve that thing. Um, and so I would do that kind of across the board. Um, so you still get the uniqueness of what you are doing while also understanding what level you're at. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, I would make the recommending people process a little bit easier and more integrated across platforms. So it's easy to be like, cool, I need to check this person. This is how I check. This is how I recommend this specific award. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how I would change the entire structure of the SCA, uh, which is where we're totally going to lose followers. Well, no, I, fuck, if you're going to lose followers, you're going to lose it because I'm going to say like exactly what Helga said, because it is... Uh, it and, and we've actually said this on previous shows, and I think more than one show, it's come up where, you know, the the way that the SCA decided to structure it, it was, and I'm positive it was all part of this retcon thing that happened probably like five to 10 years into the SCA's existence. We suddenly have to figure out not only are we doing, you know, knights slash chivalry, we got to do like equal peerages based on the arts and service. And then much later it was rapier. and and so now we're functioning in this really like weird kind of hierarchy that is does not make historical sense whatsoever. Historically, there was the Knights of the Garter, the Knights of the Bath, the Knights of the Star, the Knights of, you know, like all these chivalric orders that had these different kind of criteria to how they were structured or whatever they represented, uh, you know, whoever nobleman or king decided to create this random chivalric order, the Knights of the the Golden Fleece, you know, like all that stuff. Uh, it was, uh, it would make more sense historically, and uh, this is me as a Laurel saying historically accurately, if we all were Knights of the Chivalry, Knights of, or, you know, Knights of the, the Laurel, Knights of the Pelican, Knights of Defense, you know, like all that stuff uh, would make way more sense. Uh, but we didn't do that. And there's a lot of emotional attachment now to the system that we created in the SCA. And it is n- probably never going to happen. 
Um, but to talk, touch on a specifically Western thing, uh, Helga had mentioned the Leaves of Achievement, and that is a specific uh, ranking of awards in the West Kingdom. They are, uh, they are a AOA, uh, Award of Arms, level award, but they rank higher in the OP than a court barony. They, <laughs> and this is where, <laughs> Fleeg, if you're listening, plug your ears. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that they should be grant level because we do not have a grant level award yes! for arts, service, fighting, defense, except actually in defense, though, it's weird. Defense, we do actually have a grant level award for that, which is the gold scarf. No, gold scarf is uh, equestrian. Uh, what was the grant level? No, it's not white scarf because that no, guy. White scarf is a white scarf is was right a grant there. level, but. Yes, but anyway, the point is, is that there's there's at least no, and sorry, I didn't do my homework on this, but there for sure is no grant level award in the West Kingdom for a art service or fighting. Um, and Jesus Christ, if I were, could go and, if I were the queen of the SCA, the, you know, empress of everything, and the thing that I would do, the first thing I would do is create a grant level award. And I've talked to a lot of people that are really, really, really resistant about the idea of changing the leaves of achievement in the West Kingdom to be grant level. And then they're also extremely resistant to adding another set of awards because we have too many awards. And if somebody deserves a grant, they should just get a grant. Well, in the West Kingdom, we don't give grants, like hardly at all. Like they get given occasionally. They're very rare. I don't have one. Do you have one? So I have I have a grant, uh, but also in the West, the grant is like this weird sacred award. Uh, yeah. Just to go to like King, Inner Kingdom Anthropology for a moment mm -hmm. is uh, the West grant level award is it's a naked grant. And so you can you can give a grant award to people and it is it is literally probably one of the highest award recommend recs in the kingdom to get a naked grant because it doesn't exist anywhere else. We go from AOA to peerage real fast. And we actually tend to give grant awards after somebody has received a peerage. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, I think that's the reason why the West is so resistant to creating a level of grant awards mm -hmm. is because we actually hold it almost in like a higher regard uh, than we do a peerage. Like when you get a yeah. naked grant, everybody's like, oh my God, you're, you're a cool kid. Holy shit, how'd you get that? I don't have a grant. I'm not a cool kid. Fuck you. <laughs> no. Um, but but yeah, so we have a weird history in the West, and I'm actually reading the comments, and I'm I'm seeing my my wonderful Laurel, uh, Duchess Juana, is chiming in with some really good history about it. And she said, the West not having grants le grant levels left room for our principalities that grew up and moved out to have grant level awards. And so I, I understand that there are, you know, reasons why the West Kingdom traditionally doesn't do grant level awards the way other kingdoms have, say, a an AOA level arts award and a grant level arts award and then a peerage, you know, laurel. Um, but it, to me, having experienced this in, in real time as as a Westerner growing up in the West Kingdom, when I was on my path and I got my rose leaf when I was 19 with an AOA, it came with the AOA because I hadn't had the, I didn't get the AOA before then. So I got both together. I got my rose leaf and AOA together. And then I got nothing until I was 34 and I got laureled. And that would have been really cool to have like a midpoint for me to say, you know, or to, to know that the work that I was doing was being seen and recognized and add a boy. It's literally an add a boy, add a girl you know, out of them, like, come on, <laughs> it just, just really, uh, it, it would have been helpful emotionally for me to know that I was on the right path by being able to say, well, I have, I've gotten my AOA level award, I've gotten my grant level award, and then I must be doing something good. So I just, you know, got to keep doing what I'm doing. And fingers crossed, I'll end up with a peerage. So uh, the West has, 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 has a huge gap in between AOA, AOA level award, Rosalie award, and Peerage Le Laurel award, and that it bothers me. It really, really bothers me. And I know that this is something that I divorce really, really hard with um, my my elders on who I love and respect, and completely. <laughs> I know where the history is, and I know the emotional reasons behind it. But come on, I just, for me, I would have appreciated it. And then I talk to a lot of other people that are still on the path 
that would appreciate it. So hard. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was another thing that I also wanted to mention too, that came up uh, in the comments um, that when it comes to recognizing people, uh, you don't have to be a king or a queen or a prince or a princess or a baron or a baroness uh, to recognize somebody. You can always as a just, you know, n the, the person you are in the SCA with, even if you have no title whatsoever, you can walk up to somebody, you can give them a ring off your finger and say, thank you for the hard work you did. I saw what you did. I appreciated it. Thank you. That is always something that you, because in the SCA, we are all presumed to be noble unless otherwise indicated. Uh, we have the ability to to say thank you and to make a meaningful impact on somebody else's life and don't rely on the the royalty to get their heads out of their asses to make it work or to make an award. Uh, you can say it yourself. You can give a, a token of appreciation. You can give a thank you. You can write a poem. You can sing a song. You can stand up in court and beg their majesty's indulgence for a word to the populace about how this person did a really cool job and you really think that everyone should give them a round of applause. You have that right. Yeah. All right. So shall we move to the next one? Okay. Okay, so while Helga's uh, cycling her camera, oh, she's back. Okay, so there are a couple of people that were in um, the comments asking questions about what the differences are between AOA level, grant level, peerage level. Was that right, Baby Ninja? Yeah. Uh, as, uh, are you on? Oh, what was that? <laughs> Baby Ninja brought this to our attention. Okay, so now that know. my mic is live, uh, uh, I will read what our, our sister so show said. It was basically, can you please explain the difference between AOA grant and peerage for all of the newbies in the audience? And following that, there are a couple people who have never heard the term grant level. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, uh, a point of contention, I don't like the term newbie. Um, I used to use it a lot, but I... Somebody once said to me that it seems like it's kind of uh, othering in a way, and it's a little it's a little rude. Uh, so I decided, you know, I can see that it automatically puts somebody into a, an other category. Um, you're a newbie, you know, that's something to be looked down on, and that's not. So I I prefer new person. So that's there there there's my PC like rant for the evening. Just new person is fine. Uh, so for new people who uh, have just joined the SCA or new to the SCA, uh, the difference, wait, I just saw where he said that. Okay, please explain the difference between AOA, grant, and peerage. So the levels of how uh, award structures in the SCA across the SCA, this, this holds true across all of the SCA, not just in individual kingdoms. The, tie, uh, the, the award itself may have a different name, but the title will hold across every everything. Um, AOA is an award of arms, and we often talk about that being the welcome to the SCA award. It's typically the first award a person gets in the SCA. It is the, hey, we see you, you're awesome, keep doing cool stuff award. And which is why, and Helga has also said this, I have said this as well, and you'll hear many other people say this with many, many years in the SCA, that the AOA is the coolest award. It's your first title. It's your first titled award. Uh, it allows you to style, style yourself Lord, Lady, Armager, um, and it is a, a rank of nobility, essentially. Where we're all considered noble until other proven, uh, proven otherwise, <laughs> This is your first title in the SCA. And uh, so it's a, it's a very, very important, meaningful award. It can be granted on its own as an AOA, simply as an award of arms, um, or it can be bundled into another award, like how I got my rose leaf with an AOA. Those two came together because I didn't already have my AOA. So it conferred my award of arms with the recognition of the order of the rose leaf. Grant level is in every other kingdom other than the West Kingdom, <laughs> a mid-range between the AOA level and the peerage level. And it's sort of that second tier. Uh, it's where you've got your AOA 
um, or you've got your award that confers an AOA, and now you get your grant, your grant level. This gives you the ability to style yourself as excellency, so, or not excellency, I'm sorry, uh, uh, lordship. Lordship. Lordship, sorry. Whoa, no, lordship. <laughs> Honorable, uh, honorable lord, honorable lady, uh, uh, honorable armiger, uh, lordship, ladyship. I don't know the gender neutral version. I'm sure um, Constance will pop in <laughs> in the in the chat because I know they're in the chat. Uh, and and let me know what the uh, the gender neutral version of that is. But it is the kind of the mid range between your award of arms, your lord, lady, armiger, and your peerage level, master, mistress. Uh, knight etc um and then you get your peerage your peerage is a whole other thing in a way because it confers a patent a patent is your peerage itself it is the thing that creates a peer um it's not just you get your laurel bam you're a peer it is you have to have a patent issued that confers your peerage in the order of the laurel um, so that's typically the highest ranking award that you can get in the SCA beyond awards or beyond uh, uh, recognition such as King, Queen, Prince, Princess, Baron, Baroness, uh, when we're talking about landed barons. <laughs> so we'll get to this whole other discussion about landed versus not landed barons in a second. Um, but uh, it is it is a... Uh, it confers a, a patent of peerage upon you. So I hope that makes a little sense. Helga, would you like to chime in? Nope, I think you covered it uh, very well. <laughs> How do you acquire the other? Oh, okay, so grants grants are typically kind of a, an award system that's given the same way that AOAs are given, which is either a recommendation or the crown sees uh, exemplary activities in an individual and they and they decide. Uh, peerages are typically a polling order. Uh, it is a group, a body of other peers that sit together and talk about an individual uh, in terms of whether their readiness for elevation and then makes a recommendation to the king and queen. Um, the, the other kingdoms do a little bit differently. That I know that some king, uh, some kingdoms out there, the uh, the order itself, like if I uh, the laurels, for instance, I'm just going to talk about m me. <laughs> The laurels will say, we think this person is rad and should be a laurel. And then the king and queen are like, okay, we'll do that. Well, in the West Kingdom, it is the laurels say, we think this person is rad and should be a laurel. The king and queen say, we'll think about it. So <laughs> it's not a done deal. 90% of the time, the king and the queen will, will go upon the advisement of the council in the West Kingdom, but it is a group decision. So it is something that has to be considered uh, it, within a group. Helga, having sat on the hot seat, do you have anything to add? Nope. nope. <laughs> I like how she's just like, man, I'll just let Tulia talk out of her ass. Oh, no, I mean, like, that that covers the basics of the awards and <laughs> elevation to the awards very clear clearly and succinctly, so I don't think that adding anything to it will help. Yeah, well, and and somebody in the um, in the comments just mentioned that some, some grant-level awards do have polling orders as well um, in other kingdoms. Yeah, all of Meridia's does, uh, according to Baby Ninja. Um, but in the West, in the West Kingdom, most of okay, most of them in Meridia. Sorry, he corrected himself. But in uh, in the West Kingdom, we typically do not for since we do not have a grant level award, <laughs> other than the naked grant um, and a handful. But you know, and I got it, I got it wrong again because there is that the the gold scarves, the gold scarves are a polling order in the West yep. Kingdom. So, so, so we do greens, have yeah. a grant level polling order that is not a peerage. Uh, so is the green scarves yeah. and the white and scarves, scarves also. What are the green scarves? The green scarves are our archers. Archers, correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so shall we get back to the heavily charged questions? Sure. I just got a text. Uh, yes, we should totally do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What was the text? <laughs> the text was random. I thought it was. I thought it was somebody from upstairs telling me that I needed another cocktail. I don't know. Uh, I mean, do you need another cocktail? No, like, I don't. We can, I'm all, we can all randomly text text Thorfinn and say, hey, bring her a cocktail. Uh, he gave me a shaker full of gin and tonic, so I'm just going to... Nice. Pour. 
Okay, Anything. so are we ready for the next question? Because I yeah. believe it is mine. Yes. Okay. Should We're the West go to six-month rains? I love this question so hard. Should West go to six-month rains? Should the West Kingdom go to six-month rains? Currently, we are the only kingdom in the entire society that has a four-month rain. And there are historical reasons uh, behind that. But, you know, the West Kingdom loves its tradition uh, super a lot. So we don't want to change it. Um, yes, I think the West should get on the same fucking six month train that every other kingdom is on. I, sorry, sorry. I don't, I, I know people are going to yell at me. I especially know that my Laurel is going to yell at me any second. <laughs> but yes, I do think that the, uh, the West should absolutely switch to six month reigns. Helga. Uh, I think the West should also switch to six-month reigns. Uh, I think that we were at the four-month reigns uh, while we were having 100-person crowns, uh, and I don't think that we have the populace anymore to support uh, four-month reigns. Also, the reason why I support going to six-month reigns is because we have a lot of court rollover and burnout, mm -hmm. uh, and everybody tends to bring up the idea that there's a huge cost difference. Um, if you're taking on reigning, you're taking on the cost. Um, the cost difference actually isn't much greater. Uh, also, having reigned, mm -hmm. um, I think that the West accidentally tries to jam four months of work in, or six months worth of work into a four month reign. Uh, and so, realistically, for both the royals and for the court members in our rollover, I really think that we should move to six month reigns. Uh, mm -hmm. And in that process, I think that we should, I mean, we gain back two weekends a year. Yeah. Um, so we can do other things and have some fun uh, and go from there. Uh, and there's a lot of arguments to keeping the four month reigns of like, what if we have bad royalty, blah, blah. Okay. I ha I totally have a soapbox on this. What if we have bad royalty? You want to know what That's other awesome. kingdoms have bad royalty for six months? Ignore them. They're a bad Nobody's set of curators. broken the SCA. You get two extra months of shitty bullshit. Get, it's two extra months. Uh, a vacation. Really, you know, go like, find that shovel. Realistic. Yeah, find the shovel. Like, don't pick it up. Don't don't be involved. Like, don't be directly involved with the rain. Um, because realistically, our royals are our cheerleaders, uh, not our power structure. Our uh, our officers are our power structure, uh, and so. That's my thing, uh, is that I really think that it is past time that the, the West moved to six-month reigns versus four-month reigns. Um, I also think that this would help in coordination with uh, multi-level kingdom events. Uh, the West doesn't coordinate well because we turn over so fucking fast. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really hard to be a part of a multi-kingdom war when you don't know who your heirs are going to be and you're not involved right up until the war is happening. Mm -hmm. so, so someone else asked in the in the uh, comments um, how how would the West Kingdom adjust the calendar in order to make six month reigns a thing? Figure out and, how it doesn't run into the principalities and then go from there. Right, and and that's the other part too that I have to discuss is that the the principalities are already on six month reigns and they are not subsidized the same way by the principality or the kingdom that the way the king and the queen are subsidized by the kingdom uh when it comes to reigning so you you know they don't get write-offs on their travel fund they don't get like you know a per diem or whatever um and they you know manage to make it work right it, it's it i have known many 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 people that have reigned in principality level they love it six months it seems to be kind of a sweet spot um and and it just would it would just bring us into alignment with the rest of the society and i know the west is all about being different fuck you you know like <laughs> First kingdom, best kingdom, West kingdom, like all that stuff. And that's great. Yeah. But, you know, come on, we can, we can adjust uh, when, when read the room <laughs> kind of a thing. Um, and also, yeah, another person just mentioned right now is the perfect time to make an adjustment. We already had a king and a queen on the throne for nine months, 10 months now. Um also, I got yelled at when I made that suggestion a while ago amongst friends, <laughs> which goes to show you it's not really a popular suggestion in the West. But right now would be the optimal time to say, OK, we get a restart 
um, because we we don't have heirs in the West Kingdom. We have we have the current king and queen, Uther and uh, Uther and Vera, and uh, they stepped up at March Crown or not March Crown. They stepped up at Twelfth Night. They stepped up at Twelfth Night, so January. Um, their anniversary, one year anniversary of Uther winning that crown, just happened, and so why not? Why not adjust it? Uh, it would make sense, but. I sense that that's one of the hills that the West Kingdom will 100% die on. <laughs> Probably not going to happen anytime soon. We'll get we'll get grant level award, achievement uh, leaves before we get six month rains. Yep. All right. So if we're going to get through any more of these questions, we're going to have to be a little shorter winded. Oh, uh, you know, and I keep saying that these were going to be super easy questions and they suddenly ended up on these big long winded soapboxes. Oh, uh, yeah. So because we're actually only on question seven of 15. Well, do you want to start picking some of the more charged ones out of the ones that we looked at? I'm, I mean, I think the I'm next good, one I'm is good. pretty charged. I'm good with either one. Yeah, I was about to say, if we want to yeah. do number seven and number eight or two or two big ones, yeah. uh, and then we could probably check our audience. Sure. Okay, so seven uh, is have any of your SCA heroes turned out to be pieces of shit? How have you handled the fall of your heroes? Uh, I would like to know that Baby Ninja just snorked his fucking mic uh, <laughs> in the process. What's that Baby Ninja answer? <laughs> just seriously. He just I... gave me big eyes. He's like, mm. <laughs> hard no. Uh, so, yes, I've had heroes turn out to be, uh, pieces of shit, sadly. Uh, and part of the thing is, as you get to know a person, you get to know their mannerisms more, and you get to know their details more. Uh, and sadly, right now, we are in the age of the SCA, or sadly, also awesomely, uh, I'm gonna just say, we're in the age of the SCA dealing with, um, the mundane world crashing into what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a very loud way social media has changed how we see our peers um, and how we see each populist member actually because now people just barf their heads onto the internet and you can actually know them yeah. without having to be like I randomly found this out like three years into our relationship uh, so yes I have totally had heroes just turn into people that I was like I won't ever trust you like why would I trust you like Fuck off. Mm -hmm. um, how did I handle the fall of my heroes? Sadly, not so well. Um, so the fall of my heroes, being knighted, was the hardest thing that I have ever done in the SCA. Um, and if I could go back and hug my little unbelt self, I would then understand what the fuck Havek was saying when he says, I can't prepare you for the next thing. Uh, and he said it with tears in his eyes. And he was so right. He could not prepare me for the moment that I realized that so many of my heroes were absolute douchebags. Uh, oh, and yeah. now I had pooled renown with them. Um, and they felt that their station earned them a right to people's bodies or protections or anything else like that. Uh, and so how I handled the fall of my heroes was literally by almost becoming suicidal. Uh, and debating on sending my belt and chain back to the bod and being like, you don't fucking handle having misogynist assholes lead this society. Why the fuck would I want to be one of them ever? Uh, and then I had a bunch of unbelts come to me and say, but you're one of the good ones and we need you there so we can have a dream. So we can we can try to be better and so you can lead the next generation and you want to tell you want to tell anybody how much fucking weight that is um other knights carry that burden also uh some very good knights also carry that burden um and it's scary and it's hard and so i ha how i handled the fall of my heroes is by saying fuck those that failed me and failed the generation i will be better mm -hmm. And I understand that I am with my flaws and I understand that I will fail some of the people that look up at me as, uh, look up to me as being a hero. Um, I cannot be perfect and I cannot live up to their ideal of me, but I can every day try to never be the person that failed me. 
Uh, and I can try every day to continue to improve myself and own it. So that when I fall as a hero, I fall in a different way. I fall in the way of human. And I fall in the way of understanding what humility means. Verse falling in a way of dying on the spike of my own ego. So... Helga, uh, someone in the in the comments asked a very interesting question. Do you feel like that at all with pelicans or just with the knights? Uh, so the pelicans were less so than the knights. Um, the pelicans, there was a couple of them that the pelicans are much more who they who they are. So we idealize the knights um, and being on the path of being a knight. So I was accidentally made a pelican. I was very purposely seeking knighthood. Mm. Um, and so when I accidentally became a pelican, um, seeing kind of behind the curtains, I was like, oh, you know, I kind of expected this out of some people. I expected there to be some cattiness. I expected there to be some people, but I didn't like idolize a lot of the pelicans. I idolized some of the knights and this is my own bad. Uh, I put them up on pedestals and I didn't let them be human. Uh, and so it was very hard for me uh, to all of a sudden see my idols in such a human manner. Um, and also, realistically, the, the pelicans are, and this is where I'm going to be a jackass, uh, the pelicans are much more themselves than the knights are. The knights tend to play a role when they are a knight. Uh, so, like, at an event, they put their belt and chain on, and all of a sudden, the weight hits them of, like, I must be this knight thing. Versus a pelican is kind of almost naturally that thing. Um, and a pelican is then refined into being a peer. Um, versus knights are like hammered into this ideal. Um, and it's a, it's a very long conversation and a longer conversation than we can have on this YouTube chat. Um, but I'm always willing to have this is, um, I also feel that the laurels are kind of hammered into an ideal. Uh, pelicans are just kind of, you have the natural predilection and then people grab that natural predilection and then they like kind of mold you towards being a peer. Um, and so I think the fall of the pelican is much less hard than the fall of the laurel and the fall of the knight. Uh, and the fall of the master of defense, too. The master of defense have a very hard road to hoe right now uh, because they're still defining their order. Uh, and so people idealize what that peer should be uh, way more than they let anybody be a human in the process. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Ego, ego <laughs> is a killer. I see uh, tacos! <laughs> the lady in the lake says tacos, which means we were getting way too serious. Okay. And yeah, tacos are always the answer. I am excited about tacos. You, you can always, always count on me for tacos. Is it though? So Baby Ninja said phrasing, and I'm like, is it though? <laughs> However, uh, my answer to this question is I don't, I don't usually have a hero worship issue with people. My problem is that I trust people and I, and it's not a hero worship. It's a, I let you into my life. I let you into my inner circle. I expose my, you know, toe beans to you. <laughs> I trust you not to just poke the shit out of them all the time. Um, so, so I have not in my mind, at least that I'm thinking about. And I, when I saw this question, I couldn't think of any, any example either uh at earlier um i can't think of any situation where i've had someone i looked up to in the sca that completely you know just was like you know pissed on my ideals um i can't think of that because i am not a i'm not somebody that has heroes um and it's it's hard. it is a hard thing for me because I, I i don't think i can really answer this question sufficiently because i haven't experienced it i've basically been like i like that person and that person showed me that they were a douchebag and now i don't like that person it's not that i you know i idolize this person as some perfectional ideal and then now they've done something to tarnish that and i have to grapple internally with all of the you know emotions i'm basically like okay, that person seemed pretty cool until they weren't cool. And uh, now they're not cool. And, you know, okay, moving on with my life. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, that's my answer. As I don't, I don't, I don't have heroes. Um, I don't have people that I look up to, you know, as, as paragons of a specific thing. And, 
and then when they fail because they're human or fail because they're assholes, uh, I have to like grapple with the internal feelings about all of that. I just, it's just not my makeup to do that. So I don't know. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, we ready for the next one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. Is that with mine? No, it's mine. You also okay. last one. Okay. So, Sorry. Uh, mercenaries and combat archers, assets to the game, or dishonorable scoundrels? And this is another time where I'm just like, I don't have an opinion. Uh, I don't fight, um, so I don't have an opinion. I just, I know my friends who bitch about archers constantly. I get less, I, I hear less bitching about mercenaries than I do about archers. <laughs> so, I don't know, take that as my answer. Helga? Um, I absolutely adore and love both. Fucking yes. Oh, God, we got a troll in the fucking comments again. This is great. Wow, I love this. Yeah, no, like, have fun with the trolls, guys. Uh, eat them. Uh, so... Oh, is it the Polo King? Okay, that guy yep. has commented, or that troll, bot, whatever, has definitely popped up in previous Oh, ones. yeah, a couple times. So, <laughs> moving on from there. Uh, so, mercenaries and combat archers. I absolutely adore both of them. Uh, I think that they are actually an asset to the game. Um, where I hate getting shot with arrows. I hate getting shot with arrows because I'm a spearman. Uh, they make me fight better at wars. Um, one of the things that is absolutely amazing about mercenaries is mercenaries are great recruiting. Uh, mercenaries give... They're, they're kind of like the SCA war fringe. Um, and they give a different support to people that are coming into the SCA uh, they give a different identity. And so if you don't want to follow the, like the quote mainstream end quote identity, I think that it is really, really good to have mercenary units that it, it's another way to break into our sport. It's another way to break into the war units um, and be there and have a support structure. Um, also, I absolutely love purchasing millet, uh, yo, mercenaries, uh, both as somebody that leads a war unit and somebody that has reigned before. Like, fuck yeah, like, let me show up with coin and throw it down. Let me show up with bottles of booze and throw it down. Come fight for us. Um, and some of the mercenary units are some of the most amazing humans I've ever known. Um, I absolutely adore Black Company. Uh, they, they are like a second family to me. Uh, I will fight for fucking mercenaries to be a part of our society till the day I die. I will fight for combat archers the same way. Um, they, it is just another way for people to come into what we do and love what we do. Uh, and people that shit on them really should check their own fucking boundaries. It's funny. We have a second troll in here, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just got deleted. It's a, why is the horses? It's all about horses. It was like Polo King it's... and MS, like, do away with all horses. It's weird. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. Zero yeah. opinions. But, yeah, I you know, rock on with your bad selves. So, yeah. So, uh, ready for the next one? Mm -hmm. I was actually going to say we could skip down to number 11. Uh, yes. We're, since we're kind of pressed for time a little bit, we're trying to be a little more condensed. Uh, I'm going to mark number 9 and 10 for later use. Yes, I think that's a good idea. So this is us on the fly, like editing our Google Doc as we go. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so can you leave politics at the gate? Why or why not? How do we move forward as a society when Trump supporters are actively fighting diversity and inclusion? That's you, dude. Start. Oh, man. Uh, I get to start on this one? Shit. Sorry, yes. I was watching the troll Trump show back Trump supporters up. just got called out. You know, at least the it, it, you know at least the trolls should be giving us thumbs up for tolerating them for a moment. Yeah. Otherwise, they can go fucking suck a fat dick. Um... So, uh, this is going to be my weird thing, is we actually need to stop branding people as... So, one, you can't leave politics at the gate, in my opinion. Two, we need to stop branding people uh, like it's a sports team. Yeah. Uh, and so this is, this is where this is a very charged question that came in. Um, what I'm going to say is that politics is the line of consent. 
um, in my universe, and so it's a line of, like, politics exists because we have to define the line of body con autonomy, we have to define the consent line of financials, blah, 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 blah. Um, what we have to do is stop treating it like sports teams. Um, and so, oh my god, you're a Trump supporter or you're a Biden supporter. Um, that shit needs to stop because that's it's incredibly div uh, dividing and it's incredibly decisive and we actually need to start having conversations about human rights um, in the process and how they are represented within the SCA. We can't be gatekeepers. Um, we do need to continue calling each other on misogyny. We need to con continue calling each other on sexist behaviors. We need to continue to adapt to the changing environment. Yes, we need to be fucking woke. I'm sorry. Like, mm -hmm. we need to understand that there are multiple genders. We need to understand that there are offensive and triggering words out there and this is ever evolving and that some jokes are racist as fuck and unacceptable. Um, and we, especially as peers walking through the gate, need to be willing to have those conversations with other peers. We do not get to be sexist. We do not get to be racist. We do not get to be exclusionary in any fucking form or fashion. This is not politics. This is humanity. Um, and unless we are willing to continue to be better, fuck off. Like, and that's, that's actually my thing. And we can totally call this as a soapbox and I will drink at the end of it. Um, I can, I drink now. <laughs> yeah, you can drink, you can drink now. Um, the, the thing with the Trump supporters, uh, Trump is a red flag. He's a dog whistle himself. Um, in the fact that many of his followers are, uh, exclusionary in some form or fashion, but to start these conversations, we need to get rid of the tags. We need to get rid of the brands. We need to get rid of the idea that politics is some form of weird fucking franchise. Uh, and we need to start having the deeper conversations about that. And we need to actually understand that we have to stand against it. Uh, the paradox of tolerance is real. And within the SCA, uh, we are a dominated white male society. We are formed around that white male society and power structure. Um, and we have to face into that. We have to face into that fear and we have to face into that change. And if we do not, we will die on the wrong side of fucking history. And I refuse to be that knight and I refuse to be that peer and I refuse to be that person. Yes. I'll drink to that again. So... Uh, when we got this question, we were discussing it, um, the fact that it called out Trump supporters specifically uh, as the uh, anathema to inclusion in the SCA, um, I thought it was a little presumptuous. And actually, I wanted to say kind of I, I wanted to, to make a statement about the fact that, you know, we can't just presume that everyone who is against inclusion and tolerance and, and you know, all of that in the SCA is a Trump supporter. That That is something we do not actually know. However, we do know that Trump supporter ideology aligns with all of those things. So we do have to acknowledge that if somebody is against inclusion, if someone's against tolerance, if someone is speaking out against, uh, you know, uh, inclusivity and diversity and, you know, calling us all like snowflake, lib, whatever, probably more likely than not that language is associated with somebody who supports uh our president <laughs> but um but yeah it, it seemed a little presumptuous to me and i and i kind of was like well you know the, you can have shitheads who don't actually support trump uh but we can also just say that those people are shitheads period and that is something that uh in 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 this show I really feel passionately about in that is uh, we've achieved this platform. It's not a huge platform, but it is a platform. Um, and we want to be representational and we want to be inclusive and we want to show diversity and we want to be supportive of other people that aren't white or male. <laughs> you know, uh, we want to make this society thrive and, and survive. Uh, if we are excluding people based on the color of their skin or their sexual um, identity or their gender identity or something, you know, any other thing, uh, and we're saying those people aren't welcome, um, then we are going to fucking die. Because the the way that our society is grinding forward painfully 
every second is towards inclusivity. And I believe at the end of the day, and it may be a hundred years from now, we may not see it in the next two weeks when we have our election, but we may see it a hundred years from now that this is something that we are all going to eventually end up on, uh, looking back on and wondering why those motherfuckers in 2020 didn't get it. You know, <laughs> why we look back at historically, we are a historical society and we look back at history and we say it was also painfully obvious that you could not enslave other people because they had a different skin color. Like, what the fuck were you thinking? And the people who don't say that, who don't think that, well, fuck those people. Like, they're really fucking stupid. But, you know, the majority of, of society looks back at, like, the 1800s and says, oh, slavery. What the actual fuck were we thinking? And I think that that's what's going to happen is we're going to look back at this time period and be like, what the actual fuck were we thinking that this was OK? Um, and and we are at a we're at a, one of these tipping points um, and we've been there my entire life. I was born, you know, all of us. Everyone sitting here listening was born during a tipping point. And this is one of those times that we're going to find society uh, trying to right itself. And and so. Uh, all I have to say is that if you're against inclusion of any form, you know, you don't belong in my SCA. Fuck off. Sorry. Bye. Well, bye. I don't care. I don't want to <laughs> Well, <person>. bye. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> yes, I just quoted Tombstone. But, you know, just, I, I don't have a place for you in my SCA. And, you know, come at me, bro. What are you going to do? Take away my laurel? Mm. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So I'm going to say we skip 12 okay. and we keep 12 for later. Sure. Because I think that, that could be a good question for mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Baby well, Ninja, uh... make a comment. So uh, I have been hearing this a lot down here in Florida because, well, it's the South and they have opinions. Yeah. There's a difference between leaving politics, such as how should someone be able to immigrate into the country and what's the actual process they have to go through and where do the taxes go versus human rights? You can leave one at the door. You cannot leave the other at the door. So if you want to leave, hey, I think our taxes should go to A, B, and C at the door, that's fine. This doesn't mean you can walk in and go, I think person X because of A, B, and C shouldn't get C. Totally different topic. Mm. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, we did get an we did get a question a little bit further down uh or did we did it get skipped about like leaving politics at the door at the gate? Well, that's that's what we asked. Is the politics yeah. at the gate is yeah, yeah, like yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's right. We combine the two. That's right. Yeah. Uh okay. so I say we do 13 and then the bonus question and call it an evening. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So, number 13. Many broken stairs are given a chance uh, a chance to improve. When do we call it and tell them to fucking leave? <laughs> uh, so, I am, I am someone who has been close to a broken stair and has managed it, uh, or did manage it poorly, and is still struggling with how to, even though I'm no longer affiliated with that person, uh, how to go forward. Um, I did my due diligence and sent messages to people where that person moved and said, you know, keep your eye on this person. Um, and it's out of my hands in a lot of ways. Um, but the fact that we continually allow people to skate by, um, it's a real hard one for me. Uh, and we do want to believe in what is it the 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 better nature of of humanity. We want to say like maybe this person didn't understand that they were being a toxic piece of shit. So let's give them a a chance to improve. And if they continually fail, and there are continual situations where it's documented that this person actually willfully does not want to improve, is fine with their behavior, and doesn't think there's anything wrong with it, but continually cops to like. Oh, I had no idea I was being so bad. You know, 
after I think I think like three strikes, I'm gonna be the Californian and I'm gonna say three strikes, you're out. You get one strike to hey, yo, yeah, you're fucking up. Second strike, seriously though. Third strike, fuck you, gone. That's that's how I feel that we should attack that. But uh, you know, it's inherently flawed because uh reporting in the SCA is intrinsically flawed in itself. Okay. Uh, I'm pulling the broken stair definition for somebody real quick. Okay. <laughs> the broken stair basically means it basically means it's a it's a broken spot in uh in the group where kind of like if you're if you're walking up a staircase at a friend's house and they say oh mind the third step it's broken right but they never fix it that's kind of what the broken stair analogy comes from and it's so when you're in a group of people and there's a person who continually is say toxic in some form or another and everyone just kind of says oh that's just master so and so he's harmless or oh that's just master i'll talk to him about that later and then master so and so will come up to you and say like i'm so sorry i hurt your feelings and then continually go on to do the same behavior and nobody addresses it. Everyone just basically says, oh, just avoid that guy because, you know, he's just, yeah, whatever. Uh, yep. That's a broken stare. Uh, so what do we do about broken stairs? Um, I think that we actually address them faster and quicker than we have in the past. Um, mm -hmm. A broken stare becomes a broken stare because we are tolerating behavior. Mm -hmm. Um until it becomes systemic. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the first way to deal with the fact of a broken stair is given chance after chance to improve is those chances need to be much sooner, much faster, and much harder. Uh, we tend to, in our society, assume that people will take sub, you know, like subtle hints of like, hey, that behavior wasn't okay. Um, we as peers need to stand up to behaviors that are toxic and negative much sooner than before a person becomes dangerous within the society. Um, so given a chance, uh, like, I don't think broken stairs should be given chance after chance to improve. I think they should be given a warning and then they should be removed. Um, but also we need to make sure that we are supporting the victims in the process and that we are supporting um, the addressing issues before they become the broken stare. Uh, so you start calling people early, like, nope, sorry, that was misogynistic. Please don't do that. Like, nope, sorry, that was predatory. Don't fucking do that. Uh, yeah, but what happens when you get into a situation where you have somebody who's reasonably intelligent, uh, as in the situation that you and I both know that we are talking, <laughs> I am talking about, where it's the, they've been spoken to multiple times and they will not, Stop well, then they should they should actually be removed. Uh, part of the thing is, we should <laughs> actually put a. I don't think that the SCA really has a comprehensive reporting process. Of you can't report somebody without it being a fucking report. Like, mm -hmm. oh my god, this is now to ten. We now have a dangerous person within our midst. Like, we need to actually make it to where you're like, nope, I'm sorry, this is a grievance. This is actually a filed grievance. This person now has a recognized file. And when you get to a, you know, a level of a certain amount of grievances, cool, now we're taking action against this individual of like, hey, look, I'm sorry, you got four or five grievances against you about mildly predatory behavior. Uh, it's time to address this or GTFO, dude. Um, and we don't have that. And so I really think that dealing with a broken stare is we need to actually start dealing with the process much sooner. Uh, and we need to make it so it's comprehensive uh, and that there's a paper trail because we shouldn't be waiting until a girl is pinned into a bathroom by a dude to be like, oh, maybe all those warning signs were actually there. Um, and we should really have a zero tolerance policy about violence uh, and about uh, sexual assault. I'm sorry, like GTFO. Um, and you, and you can also you can also expand that out to non-sexual offenses. Uh, yeah. There have been situations where uh, you know somebody will go after someone on the field, and literally specific target that person. Yeah, you know, and they should have their card pulled. Yeah. Right there, cool. Sorry, I'm six months. Six months, cool. Cool it off. Like, yeah. go deal with your anger management issues and prove that you've dealt with your anger management issues, and then you can have your authorization card again. Mm -hmm. uh, the SCA is very, very tolerant. Our paradox of tolerance is too wide all over everything. Um, it's that nerd I, policy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and what I'm going to do is there's also a couple co questions that came into speaking about, like, 
peers in this? Or how do you speak to power in this? Or how do you deal with somebody that's super popular that's a broken stair? Um, fucking speak up. Write the report. Write the email. Write the email to the Seneschal. CC the crown on it and do all those things. Because popularity should not fucking guard you. And I realize that it's super scary. Um, and I've said this on other episodes. If you have this problem, you can come to me. I will help you write that email. Uh, I will send it in with you. You can CC me on it. Um, because part of the problems is if we continue to tolerate bad behavior, we are going to attract people that will exhibit this behavior and we will not make a safe environment for our youth, for our single people, both male and female and other, you know, other gendered. Um, and that's what the SCA is about is about a big party space where we can all geek out and be slightly neuro atypical and also geeks and stick jocks and weaving jocks or arts jocks or service jocks or whatever the hell you want to put it under. This is supposed to be a safe, safe space where we get to be ourselves um, away from predatory behavior. And the only way to address predatory behavior is literally weaponize other people that are in power to address it. So if you are afraid to report, I will help you report because we should not allow broken stairs to continue to stay and chase away other members. Uh, Can that's I, not how it grows. I, I have a confession to make. I was, I was a peer who backed a broken stair for a long time. And that broken stair continued to be a broken stair for a long time and is still a broken stair to this day. Uh, I realize now that that person is not a good person. And I have done uh, my due diligence in trying to advise others in their interactions with this individual. Um, so when I hear, you know, when I hear the, the word say like, you know, speak up, say things, say things, talk to, talk to people, you know, who are, uh, you know, authorities, talk to your seneschal, talk to your crown, talk to, uh, you know, your DEI liaison, like whoever it is, uh, I still in my mind am cycling back through the years when I was in the position and someone came to me and said, I feel really uncomfortable about this situation that I was in with this individual. I don't know how to deal with it. And you know what I did? I protected that person. And that's something that I struggle with <laughs> and I feel shitty about and I want to rectify. And I've actually gone back to the people that came to me and said, Hey, you know, I, when you came to me and I, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know. And I trusted the other person's, the broken stairs uh, version of events. Um, and now that I know that this person is truly a broken stair and a piece of shit, uh, I wish I'd listened to you. And I got gaslit along with everybody else. So when we have these situations where it is, these people are entrenched, they're protected. Because people like me who just want to believe that that person is a good person at the end of the day, and if we just, it was a misunderstanding, and if we just talk about it, and we have like an intervention, and all of this stuff, it'll all be okay, and it will never happen again, and then it keeps happening. And what do we do? At that point, that's where I am, where I'm like, I have to have this reckoning about it. I am not perfect. I fucked up. <laughs> I don't know how to make it any better for the people that this person hurt um, other than to apologize, you know, for my, my part of protecting this person. Um, and, and I have gone to those people that have spoken to me directly about it. And at the time, you know, for whatever reason, I was like, it was just a misunderstanding. Um, but, but I still carry that guilt with me. And so when I when when this person moved kingdoms, I sent messages to people I knew in the kingdom that they were moving to and I said, "Hey, there's a pattern of behavior um I want I want you to know about." And thankfully they're they're like, "Yes, thank you for letting us know." So, but I don't have any other follow-up. I don't know. You know, I don't know how anything is going on in the other kingdom. Um, in the other organizations that we were both members of, uh, they basically told me, well, it's your word against theirs. You know, like, so, so at the end of the day, it is a really sticky situation. And I want to be the person who says, yes, I fucked up. And I understand that it's a sticky situation and it's a situation that is not easily navigated. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know how to deal with it other than say, 
in my situation, I was wrong. I'm trying to be better and I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, I don't know what else I can do. Um, so speaking to that, uh, as a person that has been involved with Broken Stairs before, um, the only way to do, I think that you can't carry that guilt and you have to forgive yourself in the process. Uh, and this is speaking to everybody watching that if you have been a part of somebody that was a broken stair and defended them, you have to forgive yourself and just learn from this situation. Um, well, I think here's the other question. Why don't I just name this person? Why don't I just name this person? Because you're not ready to yet. Because I'm not ready to. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but I have made authorities aware yeah. and other other jurors. And that's, that's part of the thing is you're yeah. just as much of a victim as the as the people that he targeted. Uh, and when you're ready, you will you will deal with it in that way. But you have to deal with the fact that it's never too late to come forward. It's never mm -hmm. too late to own your shit. Um, and it's never too late to help start protecting others from the same situation that you were in. Um, so forgiveness is a huge part of that. You have to be able to forgive yourself before you can move forward. Otherwise, you will continue to wallow in that moment in time. And well, I... it will be okay eventually. And one of the things that I do try to remember is essentially like this was a learning experience. Uh, I got I got, you know, gaslit like crazy. Um, and I realize now what it, what was happening. Uh, now I have that experience and I'm a more attuned to it. So if I see it happening or if it's doing if someone's doing it to me, I understand what's going on. So I'm more likely now to stand up and say, like, fucking no. <laughs> You know, yeah. Um, but but yeah, it is it is a, a thing I will continually uh, for a while, for sure, um, struggle yeah. to come to grips with. But. Um, and one of the things that I want to address that came up um, in the comments is what if a person is broken due to mental or emotional illness uh, that they're working on? Is this uh, counter to inclusivity? Um, that person needs a handler if they're actively working on this problem then they should have a handler with them that understands their triggers, that can handle them when they are triggered, and then help create a safe space for everybody else. Um, the problem is that if you are a dangerous person or you have a dangerous tendency, you have to own that in a public space. It is not the job of the public space to make it safe for you and tolerate a dangerous behavior. Um, this is, and I will use a very uh, open example, is I do not carry uh, a knife on me. Um, you will see me not carry my sacks with me when I am feeling triggered or um, uh, emotionally amped up uh, because I have had to pull my knife on somebody before. Um, I have been in a situation, I, I have been in some very interesting situations in my life. Uh, and so I understand that I am capable of doing things with that it's not a fucking posturing threat um and so at events if i am there in the process and understand hey i'm feeling really edgy tonight or i'm feeling unsafe tonight or i'm feeling aggressive tonight i will one talk to whoever is out partying with me and be like hey i'm feeling this way i'm gonna hang with you i'm gonna make sure that i don't imbibe in alcohol i'm gonna make sure that i am uh, that i feel in a safe place or i can come over and tap out and be like hey i need you to walk me back to camp I also don't carry in that process. Um, and so you have to own your own damage to make the space safe for others. It is not their responsibility to deal with your fucking damage. So. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go to the happy last question of the evening? Yeah, let's do the happy last question. <laughs> um, so the bonus question, do you want to read this one or shall I? Yeah, I'll read it. Okay. Right. You've switched bodies with the tech crew for 72 hours. Who do you switch with, and what is the first thing you do in your temporary body? Reverse for the tech crew, if they pop in at some point. So, uh, we so should get I the tech you. crew's uh, opinions on this as well. <laughs> uh, so, if I've got 72 hours, I want to I steal both their bodies at some point. You need to steal uh, a day and a half in each. I want to do a day and a half in each, actually. <laughs> like, that's, that's my weird goal, is I want to do a day and a half in each, because uh, I believe in, like... This is now science. One, <laughs> both of them have dicks. Uh, I 100% am going to masturbate, like, right out the gate. 
uh, because I want to understand how that mechanism works. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. loving Baby Ninja's reactions. Carius's reaction right now is just stony face. <laughs> yeah, like 100%. First thing I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to lock the door. I'm going to touch that dick and I'm going to touch that dick until I figure out how it works. I'm going to be like a teenager at that moment in time. I'm going to figure this thing the fuck out. Um, with Baby Ninja, I'm going to flirt hardcore with a bunch of women. I am going to, like, lay it down thick. I'm going to use every bit of charm that I have in this body. I'm going to apply it to that body. And I'm just going to leave him to the point of where he's just like, what the fuck is my life now? Like, this is how he's this like, is He's like, shit, I've pissed off everybody. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's going to be like, what the fuck is my life times Araya. Times um, <laughs> Araya. Because <laughs> Oh, man. I, I just fucking mundane name to myself mm. and with Carius in Carius bo body one I'm gonna lock that door I'm gonna touch that dick I'm gonna figure out how that thing works like what sets it off like what neurotransmitters are there what do you think Carius is listening I'm gonna do the same damn thing. I'm just gonna Araya the fuck out of his life with a bunch of women. I'm gonna see if at any point in like both of these windows, I'm gonna see if I can get laid with this body because I want to understand how that works from the other end. Like hardcore, like right there, we're gonna go at it. Um, and so like, but Carius is more swap. Baby Ninja is a little bit like wild, slightly cute, everything else like that. Carries carries the suave, slightly Bond-like attitude, and so I'm going to try the two different flirting techniques, see what works and goes from there. Um, also, I'm going to play with all of his tech stuff. Like, all of his tech stuff in his house, I'm going to touch. I'm probably going to change settings. It's all going to be in cloud. He gets back into his body, and we're going to go from there. Okay, so I, I actually had to think about this question, too, and my, uh, my answer is largely similar to uh, Helga's. Um, however, I will say like the, the motivating factor for like baby ninja is that I really want to experience what it's like to be a dude in my twenties <laughs> and just chaos. chaos, exactly. Chaos. All the chaos I wanted, I want to know just, you know, educationally, like for edification purposes, I, I'd like to know what it's like to be a dude in their twenties. Uh, and Carius is, you know, his charisma and his intellect. And the gravitas that goes along with that. And, like, compare contrast. <laughs> like, yeah. What would the charisma of being in my 20s versus the gravitas of being in my 40s afford me as a man? I would like to know. <laughs> more expensive. Probably more expensive toys. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, also, who knows? It could be fun. It could be a lot of fun. Legitimately, uh, I would probably have to jerk off into a sock just to, like, get that teenage boy experience. <laughs> Baby Ninja's dying right now. Carius is literally sitting here like this. I don't think he's listening to us. I think he's got us turned off. I don't think he's listening at all to us. <laughs> Which makes it even better. Okay, so... Baby Ninja, would you like to turn your mic on and tell everyone what you would do in this situation if you were to trade bodies with Helga or I? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, to be honest. <laughs> you know, okay, fair enough. Fair but enough. I... It, just you I mean, two really, kill me. I, think you're I swear just to too God. Shy. I think you're totally too shy to tell <sighs> us. Like, we just spilled the beans that we would totally touch your dick. Like, it would be with your own hand, but what? we would totally touch your own dick. Duck dick ditching. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, now I'm, I'm embarrassed. So maybe I've already traded brains with Baby Ninja because now I'm embarrassed on his well, behalf. So, he's so been talking about touching his dick. Part of it was like she said that, and the first thing in my head was like, it's, a, it's like a jack in the box. You just keep going, and then boom. Like, that was the first thing that popped in my head when she said that. And I'm just sitting here going, oh my god, I almost said that out loud. <laughs> yeah. So oh I'm, my I'm gosh. Thinking, like, you would just laze around the house for 72 hours in one of our bodies. You wouldn't go take it out for a test drive. Like, I want to tell you, my boobs are really good. Yeah, like, <laughs> her boobs are amazing. I, uh, so I don't like, know, honestly, because, like, I've never put any thought into it. I mean, uh, just imagine waking up with a set of boobs next to Hansa. First off, I was trying to figure out how how to reach the fucking top shelf. That's the first project, okay? 
<laughs> oh my god, I have yeah. no idea because I never reached the top shelf. <laughs> you're you're talking to a dude who's six foot, and I can just like reach on top of any, anything. Fuck off! I'd dude. be like, how do how do I get this? Why is that way up there? When did I shrink? What's wrong with the world right now? I mean, to be fair, actually, that would probably be the first thing I would do before I touch myself would to just be like, wow, I can reach all the high shelves. <laughs> I'm glad you guys said you would touch Carrie's tech shit and not mine. Well, I don't know. Well, I, I would I your tech touch, so hard. You know, uh, but, you know, you would have to also, if you had my body, have to listen to Thorfinn's rambling 24-7. So I don't know if you're like prepared for constant Thorfinn. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I, I've, pro I've probably dealt with worse. So. No, I don't think you. It's 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 a lot of very random stream of consciousness. A lot of it is very funny, but a lot of it is also like, what the fuck? <laughs> so chat's like they'd lick it. I already lick my own stuff. Like like. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, that's some flexibility bit there, baby ninja. I would 100% take that for a ride. Like, are you that flexible? 100% would try sucking my own cock. This is why we can't I mean, have well, nice I'm things. Curious. So very few people can. Yeah. I still I mean, wish Carius were paying attention because I'm sure he'd have a lot of opinions on this right now. Hey, hey Carius, can you can you hear any of us? He's not listening to us. Carius. No. He's not listening to us. <laughs> Like, nope. Now we know. Carius tunes us the fuck out. Yeah, Carius is not paying attention at all. Like, I would like oh this God. noted. This is on video. Carius is not paying attention one fucking bit. <laughs> baby Ninja 100% is right now. <laughs> like, baby, baby Ninja is committed to sparkle motion. So, okay. the problem is if I mute you guys, like, Carius might have stream won't hear you so i'm just stuck with it and i'm like oh god this is where we're going with this yes this is the hill we're dry dying i'm on. just like i'm just totally dying on the fact that curious is missing this question uh so chat i can't just turn his mic on because he just isn't listening to us no, um, no he's got his like, mic uh, all of can you a private message him real Wait. quick because i want to know his answer i Hang mean on, you I'm can totally try baby ninja do you have your mic on people are asking if you don't have uh, they're telling me to turn his mic on. Turn Carrie's oh. mic on. There what am I is. missing? Oh, Carrie's, you missed everything. <laughs> everything. So, Carrie's. Yeah. You missed it. <laughs> I'm like that guy on Scrubs that misses things. Yeah. Oh, man. You missed everything, including me, like, flashing my boobs to get your attention. You did um, not. I was watching. I just didn't have audio going. Uh, right. I don't believe you. Uh, so, uh, there's a question for you to answer. You've switched bodies with us for uh, either Sassy or myself for 72 hours. What do you do with it, and what's the first thing you do in this temporary body? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is play with boobs. That's fair. I'd probably do the same thing. Yep. I mean, I got some, but they're not, yeah, fleshy and firm. And... <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then I would... Drop a plate. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I would like to go out about town and like hit on dudes and see just how easy it is to get positive, uh, you know, reports. Okay, positive so feedback. since we're broaching this, like, here's, just don't hit them. Just go out. It will be the same thing as my friend's experience at the gay bar. Straight dude to gay bar. He was the pretty girl at the bar for the first time ever. Just hang out and see what happens. Yeah. For science. For science. Okay, for that, you are 100% going to take Sassy to do that. Don't take me. I always come off as the... Well, you're in your 40s. Bar. I'm in my 40s. Like, come I, on. I have never I'm been hit on that far. You've what? I've never been either, no. honestly. I can I can tell you 100%. I am an SCA 10. I am an, a, a mundane, like, 4. I am not somebody that, like, dudes are like, hey, at, at bars. Except for the creepy ones. The creepy ones will do that. But not anybody that I would ever, like, really want to be attracted to. And even the creepy ones are few and far in between. So. Yeah, no, like, uh, I always come across as, like, the angry bull dyke at the bar because I'm, like, hurting all the women around. So I, like, 
I think I've, never, I've never like, experienced that like randomly being hit on. Uh, I have experienced <laughs> random stepping in between dude and friend and being like, would you like to fucking touch my girlfriend again? I have I have this thing I think I just come across as they like, yes, I have a master's degree in a humanities uh, subject with a lot of feminist theory. So like, you're not going to want to talk to me. <laughs> oh, I'd be a slut. What? Straight up. <laughs> it's so different when you have the body. When you're like in the body, it's a different thing. It is really different. Cause like if I were a dude, I would be a slut. Oh my god, I would fuck oh, everything. A hundred percent. Like I don't care, man, woman. Like I'd, I'd be one I'm of those like, dudes that they made yeah. the random comments about of like they yeah. stuck their dick where. <laughs> yeah pretty much i would be like yeah exactly and, and i would do that but like as a woman i'm literally like i fucking <laughs> hate you <laughs> um i would like it noted that my husband just said you would do it once and then you would learn and you would get some class because i know you Girl. <laughs> um though Seriously, like, just diverging this for a second, if I could, like, swap bodies with Hans for 72 hours, the damage I would do, okay? Like, just the absolute wrecking I would do in that body. Like, he would get back into that body and just be like, why am I a puddle and I can't do anything about life? And I'd be like, because I took this body for a test drive, like a V8 Mustang that I rented with the extra insurance. So if I traded bodies with Thorfinn, I think it would literally be like me now in Thorfinn's body. And I don't really think it would be substantially different. Oh my god, I'd have to come over and hit on you super hard. Oh well, oh well. you know, you hit on me anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would substantially change if I traded bodies with my boyfriend. Yeah. Uh... So I might have a lot more opinions about like, you know, fighting than I have now, but you know, that's about it. I would actually totally try fighting in Hans's body. Like I would totally try fighting in either really? Baby Ninja's body or Curious's body too, because I'd be yeah. like, how do these mechanics work? Like and that's so, and that what is, the fuck is this. We talk about we talk about like, you know, if we had the if we traded bodies, like, yeah, we would like fuck everything, blah blah blah. But like the actual like mechanics of what you can do with a a male body, like Wow, you could do so much damage. It could be uh, so cool. I need to interject. Yes. Uh, about the first three or four hours would be getting used to this stuff between your legs getting in the way of everything. Like you try to sit down, and you're like, oh, oh, adjust because I don't want to sit on the boys. Um, and then, you know, I, I know you'd have fun peeing and standing up. I do. You just pee all over everything because that's what little boys do. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Like they, they were just like, I'm sorry, you would come. It would home just be a night. constant stream of like fire hose. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, actually. So th that begs the question: If you're gonna fight in our bodies, does the muscle memory stay? That'd be interesting. That would actually be super interesting. I think I've recovered from injury enough that I could probably pretty quickly adapt. It would probably take a practice or two. Um, so what really what needs to happen is like, uh, Baby Ninja, are you ready for me to be an asshole? Go for it. So I just need to steal your body for like six months uh, and fight on the regular and just have all of your kingdom be like, what is Baby Ninja doing fighting with a sword and board? We don't understand this. Also, why is he hurting us? <laughs> because <laughs> what's the damage I can do with a six foot body? Oh. Okay, so so the second question: Why is he hurting us? I get asked all the time already. Why? Uh, why is he why so is, mean? Yeah, you're mean, baby ninja. You're actually mean. That's weird. <laughs> also, I'd probably take a ton of dick pics, just amusingly enough, and then like ship them well, to my other yeah, body. So, I so but here, here's what: It doesn't matter what you do; they are almost never flattering, ever. Uh, whatever, I figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. Figure it out, bud. Um, so on that note, should we wrap up our bonus episode? I think we should wrap it up. And you know what? If you haven't liked us yet, then I don't even know what's happening. I was about to say, remember, likes or cat treats for this one. 
Oh, oh little man yeah. hasn't come down. So, but yeah. Yeah. All uh, right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this bonus episode. This is the bonus episode number three. I just want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in midweek uh, and enjoying this weird fuckery. Uh, we had over 50 questions uh, sent in for this show, and we are keeping a ton of them for later episodes. Some of them are really, really good. Uh, and one of them uh, about Trimgate is coming up Friday, actually. Uh, so yeah. hang on for that ride. So we did uh, get a question about Trimgate, and it is coming up because uh, our guest on Friday specifically asked, to answer it. So tune in Friday. <laughs> yep, tune in Friday for that. And so uh, speaking of which, our guest Friday is Dom from Aidenvelt, who is a knight, a laurel, and a pelican. Uh, also a fantastic brewer who has sent us mead for the show. Um, I'm really looking forward to this episode. Uh, and so with that, I'm just going to say, like and share us. Thank you so much for hanging out. We love your faces. Come hang out on us. Uh, come hang out with us on Discord. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. So we will see you all Friday. Two days from now. <laughs>